Well, hello everybody. This is Steve Buckskinner 54 with Mountain Man Bushcraft, and I'm coming to you from a semi truck. And I know I have not gotten a video out to y'all in quite some time, uh, and I do apologize for that. It's just life happens, you know what I mean. So it's either I'm out here over the road, um, but I've been wanting to do my videos at home and uh, where I have a more scenic backyard and, and that kind of thing but the weather hasn't been cooperating and and uh, all that kind of stuff so anyway listen I'm I told you that I wanted to do a video on uh, different knives sizes the grinds and the purpose of those types of knives at least the purpose of those kinds of knives as I see it but um, just to kind of give you a little Oh, evolution of my taste in knives. Uh, growing up, I've always loved Bowie knives, and I still do. I still love the shape of the clip point and, and all of that. But uh, you know, there's things change, and and I'll tell you what. A lot of that I give credit to Dave Canterbury. Uh, I've always liked a hidden tang knife. I still do. I love a beautiful handle. A good solid handle and uh, but I found that it's not always that practical if you're going to really put it through the grind so to speak so uh, without any further ado let's just go with uh, the Jeff White knife and now here's where I started appreciating a lot more a full tang knife and uh, uh, this particular knife, I believe this blade is about four and three quarter or maybe even a little more than five. It might be about five inches. And this is the bush knife. Um, I think there's the bush one, the bush knife, and the bush HD, I guess it's called. And uh, this thing is really sharp. Now this one here has a convex grind. I really personally like a convex grind. Uh, one of the things about it is when it's meatier up here, but it gradually gets meaty up here. And that makes grinding or, or cutting through like a flesh, you know, if you're cutting meat, processing meat, it, it really works good for that. And it, you won't get hung up so easily as you're pushing through it and because it's a gradual thickness coming up and it's tapered pretty much all the way down until you get so far and uh, it's about an eighth of an inch spine very sharp spine so it's really uh, conducive for for uh, using on a ferrocerium rod and I mean it just throws some serious sparks so uh, this this is just a great great camp tool and I'll tell you for the price you can't go wrong you just can't go wrong and if you like that real rugged uh, hand forged finish these are just great they're fantastic and and like I said my gosh this thing holds an edge it's just unreal so anyway there's that one there and uh, I'll tell you I, I really like this knife it's it's got the curly maple handle on it so that's one convex right there and 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 I would consider this to be just a really good camp tool it's good for processing meat it's good for uh, you know you can hack away at stuff you know come back here on the handle and hack away at things small limbs and stuff like that and uh, you can baton it it's just not gonna hurt this thing and and being that it's got a convex grime batoning through something it's gonna act more like a hatchet when you're doing it. it's gonna spread out and really split things well so uh, let's get to another one here. Let me pull out this one here. Uh, I like Puma knives. I guess mostly for the aesthetics. and But this one's got a hollow grind. And I think most of their knives do. I don't know that they were always that way. Uh, Hollow grinds okay. You can get a really good edge on them and stuff, but uh, I'm not 
I don't know. I'm just not that keen on hollow grinds. You know, if, if you slice into something, you, you get up just so far to here, and now you've got resistance. And uh, But, it, you know, it's a good knife. It's good for field dressing a, an animal and that type of thing. And there again, it's, it's the clip point. It says original buoy on the side of it, which most people that know anything about the real Bowie knife, it did not have a big clip point on it. It's more like a butcher knife. A fancy butcher knife, but uh, more like a butcher knife. But that, that's the hollow grind, and, and like I said, I don't know all that much about bush crafting with it and, and that type of thing, but some people really like a hollow grind. And if that works for them, then that works for them. Uh, I got nothing against it. It's just not my personal preference. But, but it does have a place. And this has got a full tang. You know, it's got a guard on it. And gosh, this has got to be every bit of six inches. Maybe better. But, you know, I've seen guys baton with, uh, with a hollow grind and do just fine with it. Because, you know, it gets up to this point. It starts splitting down really well. So, anyway, there's that one there. Let me get another one. Now, this one here, I, I've showed this one before. I got this one at a uh, consignment shop, and somebody made it. So it looks homemade, and but I like that kind of stuff, I, and I love Crown Stag. And it's a hidden tang, but this one has a Scandi grind. That is that it's thick. It's got the same thickness all the way down to the blade edge here, the top part of that where it, the edge ends. And it's just a flat grind from there down. Now I use this for a patch knife and it's just fine for a patch knife. And you could fill dress an animal. It's, it's plenty long enough for doing anything like that. You could do some serious skinning with this knife. And it as well, all my knives hold a good edge. So I mean, you know, there's nothing, nothing new there, but um, you know, there again, uh, cutting down through stuff, and I, I'm not all that keen on a Scandi grind, but for a patch knife, it'll work just fine. And uh, so, I really like it a lot. And it, like I said, a lot of people, they swear by Scandi grinds for feather sticking and, and batoning. Now, this one's a little small for batoning, but I guess if you wanted to baton for some kenneling and that type of thing. And to be, be honest with you, look, when it comes to batoning knives uh, to, to make kenneling, there's plenty of stuff out there to, to gather up for kenneling, you know, and, and I understand the whole concept of it, but there's plenty of stuff to grab for kenneling and a lot of little twigs and all that kind of stuff. So uh, anyway, I, I really like this little knife and it, go, it goes with my 50 caliber bag for my uh, Pennsylvania Blue Ridge and in fact uh, got another couple of videos I hope to do maybe when the weather breaks uh, on a couple of other guns that I'm getting or one that I already have and then another rifle so uh, stay tuned for that but anyway this goes with that bag and, and then I got another bag for my other gun and it's got a different patch knife so um, I'll be showing that later on as well. That's the one actually I put on my 50 caliber bag uh, that I got from uh, Cliff that my brother got for me. So uh, anyway, Scandi grind there. I'm rambling on. And this one here, and you probably recognize it. This one I believe is little better than six inches though it's about six and a quarter inches I believe and it's got a full six inch cutting edge on it this is a full tang it's got uh, elk antler uh, scales on it love this knife absolutely love this knife now this one's got a full flat grind pretty much full flat grind all the way down it's got some of the uh, hammer forge finish on there you can see but by and large it's a full flat grind now a knife like this I, I just wouldn't trust 
batoning it because it's it it stays it gets thin real quick and uh, well I don't know some guys do baton with knives like this and I trust uh, Cliff Felras uh, uh, heat treating system he he does he's got it down to a science and this knife here I just wouldn't do it because I I wouldn't want to beat on a knife that is so beautifully made and that was given to me but this one here to me a full flat grind is perfect for processing meat and and uh, skinning and that type of thing uh, wow what a edge this thing holds and it's it's just a beautiful knife but that, that, to me that's what a good flat grind like I said a good six inch cutting surface it's just kind of a good all-around knife for the camp and I tell you if push come to shove and I needed to baton something I'm sure it would work just fine I wouldn't have uh, any qualms about it at all if push come to shove so but this wouldn't be the only knife I would have with me so uh, I'd probably have my Jeff White uh, uh, camp knife there so anyway that one there very nice very nice now these next two are more of what I would call and it, these are convex grinds these are two other ones that my good friend Cliff made now this has got a hidden tang I think it comes pretty far back but and he likes to use a nice straight piece of antler when he ever uses antler and uh, you know like I said it's a convex grind it's not so big that you couldn't use it for field dressing an animal uh, at the same time this would make a dandy fighting knife and actually I, I think it's probably around the same length as that other one with the uh, uh, the antler scales on it um, that Cliff made. Cliff made this one as well. But I almost see this one almost like as a fighting knife as well. You know, it's just got that that size and it's got the heft. Uh, this is uh, quite a bit better. I, well, probably three sixteenths of an inch thick, and it's got some serious weight in the front. So, I mean, it just seems like it would just be a serious fight knife. And, uh, like I said, a convex grind. Serious, serious edge on that thing. So, this, remember, this is just my opinion on this kind of thing. So, just one more knife. Now, I brought these knives out with me, and I... I I kind of thought about bringing a couple of other ones out that are, to me, well, let me show you. This one here is quite large. And uh, to me, this, <laughs> this is a fighting knife. It's for self-defense. No getting around it. Now, could you field dress an animal with it? Absolutely. Uh, it would be a little awkward. Uh, could you skin an animal with it? I don't see why not. But to me, it's, it's basically for self-defense. And now I have two other uh, clip point buoys that are bigger than this. And to me, it's... The, it's just obvious that those are fighting knives. In fact, the one that is a Bagwell buoy copy, uh, the man who makes them, Bill Bagwell, even shows how to use them in self-defense. And his knives are made for that. They're made for concealing and for self-defense. So uh, this one here, to me, I, I I like this to carry this at rendezvous. It's a great looking knife, along with that other one that Cliff made. Uh, you know, th this one here. 
I've, I've carried it at rendezvous, but this one here, I like for cowboy action and that kind of thing. I wear my, with my, my sharps when I'm carrying my sharps and stuff like that, you know. So, they're just great as far as looks go, you know. And now, I've used this before, not for fighting, of course. Um, but I've used it for cutting stuff, you know. And uh, look at that sheath. Just really cool. I love this. Isn't that nice? I love leather stuff anyway, and I'd make some stuff myself. And that's about it. But, you know, that's just my personal opinion on knives and, and the purpose of the various types of knives and those grinds. And like I said, I, for all-around purposing, I like a knife. Uh, you know, I wish this 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 bush knife was a little longer. And uh, but it's it's a great batoning knife. It's great for feather sticks. I just feel like I have more control with it when I'm doing small tasks. And um, yeah, that that's why I like this knife. And a lot some people don't like that smaller handle up front right there uh, that smaller part of the handle uh, it fits me just fine and, and this part right here it's just really great for choking up on and doing some really really you know some fine work you know so that's that's my view on the knives and just you know hey if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up subscribe and give me your comments on there. You know, tell me that I'm full of it, <laughs> if you think so. But anyway, hey, thank you guys so much for tuning in. God bless you all. This is Steve, Buckskinner54 with Mountain Man Bushcraft. We'll see you all later on.